Hello and welcome back to the Kuma crowd. I know this video is different, but this has to be addressed. YouTube, not YouTube, rendering software. It's time to cut out the bull, because I'm frankly sick and tired of going on different tutorials and not working, or, or just, or just, just, why does rendering software have to be a pain in the ass? Like, why, why can't it just be simple? Click a button, it comes out how you pull it in, but no, it's gonna degrade it and YouTube degrade it even more. So this is the thing I use, if you like my style, I hope you like this. Okay, first of all, before you touch, before you brief, before you even think about moving your sweet finger to that render button and slashing out some renders, see your hideous damn video that you've made, yeah? See it? Pull it on there. Now, before you start hacking and slashing it like some sort of crazy maniac, right click on it, properties, disable this goddamn resample, especially if you're doing mp4 because unless you want your thing to look like some sort of see my hands on here if i wave them fast enough look how blurry they are They're like giant blurry fins oh like flippers yeah that's what will happen to your whole thing it will move and it'll be like wavy like someone's on a trip that's what will happen okay now after we've desampled that that's a base thing you've got to do go on video properties i'll blast through this because this one's terrible uh just go find down go on to hd 60i no sorry h 1080 60i this one to 30 fps go on 1080p that's hd 30 fps because youtube only does 30 fps anyway and it doesn't look any different so whatever um non-progressive one square that turn that off 8-bit because it doesn't change it at all uh, best because you want that best resolution uh, Caucasian just because I don't know what it does but it stops all that stupid blurring I think it's just ridiculous you don't want motion blur that's the pain in the ass this deinterlaced none of that you don't want frames blending then you start as a new project hit apply wham a bum done but an audio sorry forgot about this stereo 0 48 16 and best. I could tell you why, but it just trust me. You just gotta trust me. It just works, okay? You just gotta trust me. What I usually do when doing a video, before we even get to rendering, is I like to add a cheeky bit of video effects for me. Sharpen. Now scroll down, go on video effects, and scroll down to sharpen, which is this one here. Now see default, you can click on this, and you drag it onto the actual video file. Now could you see there? Let me just turn it on and off again. Keep your eyes on this, see here? That's it without, this is with it, that's without it, that's with it, that's without it, that's with it, okay? You can lower it, I don't do it as high, I do it on 0 0.050. If I drag this over, see, you can upcrease and decrease the amount, and I do it on 0 0.50 like that. That's what I use. Um, you can do it more, you can do it less, it's completely up to you. Depends how retarded or non-retarded you want your video to look. It's completely up to you, but... And this is a big but. I have been stuck. I was doing a few Evil Within 2 um, videos, yeah. And I was doing some black and white video effects from up here. Some black and white. It was all nice black and white. See, it was sexy black and white. I mean, that doesn't suit that, but it looks nice. And then I realised in Redditing, rendering, I made this video and none of the video effects were there. I'm like, what's going on here? And it turns out rendering software likes to make it that extra little bit difficult and screw you over just like it does everyone else. See this bit of picture here, this video preview on external monitor. Well, if I click that, now that should be auto on when you style it up. If you just installed it, that should be on. And I just left it on because I never bothered with it. And it's just on. And what it does is it shares your preview for external monitor. So what you have here, if you have a second monitor like I do, it will be hideously blurred and disfigured on the left of you. And you don't want that. But what it also does, ha ha ha, it doesn't show video effects. It's like, no, nope, not having a video effects. Sorry. But screw you. All right, now we're actually getting into rendering, which is important because I use MP4, but I also used Avi. And I'm just like, Avi, MP4, Avi, MP4. And it just, oh, the pain. Go on to main concept. Everyone uses that main concept. And go on internet 1080p because you want that 1080p. Anything lower and you're a scrub. All right, it'll come up with this. Let me just go onto mine. Here we go. Customize template. Here we go. So type in what you want to be. I put render settings MP4. Go on that and then go on high profile because you want it the best quality you can get or not it depends if you want to be a scrub be a scrub frame rate matched to the preference 30 fps 
your video may be 60 FPS like mine are, but it doesn't matter. 60 FPS, 30 FPS, as long as it isn't below 30 FPS, it's fine. It looks fine, it works smooth. So good, so good. Um, yeah, progressive scrand, none, one, use the blogging figure because I don't know if any of you have realized this. You probably have because I always realize this every time I look for a new tutorial. I'm just like, oh, it's worked, but I could get it better. So let's look on another video. The video always looks crap in comparison to what you've recorded it in. So I have a thing where I record it, say on the Elgato or my new video of Shadowplay, crisp, smooth, sweet, and it looks great. And then I render it and I'm like, has someone just rubbed rubbed acid over my video? Why does it look like this? It's because it's blocking. This would help with that, but the sharpen would help more. Like I showed you, sharpen does help a lot, but this will help the extra mile. Uh, it looks pretty sweet. Uh, it may add a few minutes onto your rendering, but you know what? Screw it. Screw it. Just do it. Variable bitrate, just keep it on 10 and 12. You could have the highest you want in the world. You could have 2400, no, 240 million. And you could be like, whoa, so fair, so good quality. Yes, but you're going to be waiting two years for that, and YouTube's going to compress it down to the potato quality it deserves. So good luck with that. So we can have it on 12 and 10, because that's what it does. And you can have the number of slices. What that means is the more it is, the more slices render at the same time. So it's supposed to make it a bit quicker. But I think it's lying, because it never has for me. So good luck with that. And enable... Get rid of that. It doesn't do anything. And it just makes it... a worse it just it just drags out the time so get rid of that audio 48,000 and 128,000 they're like what you use some rate YouTube's like we want that so give YouTube what it wants give it what it wants until it does something bad to you then cut it off you go into system next and you check your CPU it depends what you have your graphics card see I have an NVIDIA so CUDA is available for me so when you go on encoder mode you can go on CUDA and it will render it a bit faster and OpenCL for a different graphic card and CPU if you have none and you have no option but to do this so do that system yeah project and just put it on best because you again want the best quality <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing but yeah just do that mp4 will make the quality better but it may drag it a bit a t a t just a teeny bit longer 20 minutes longer but it, it's worth I think it's worth it that's what I use um, now the comp and these are on like 18 minute videos so on an 18 minute video it could be 30 minutes for me it depends on your computer my computer is not a potato so it depends for you uh, I go on uh, Avi which is this one is the next step now I it depends what you want flip and flop mp4 for quality or if you want speed go for Avi but I'm not saying Avi looks terrible on the contrary Avi looks pretty decent for what it does see the codex is what it does what it is so Go on to Avi for Windows. Go on the drop down bit where I found. Go on Windows video, video for Windows, and go on to 1080p 60i, and you will get some settings. And if they're different, change them to this. Now I would change this to 30 because, like I said, it doesn't matter. Your projects are in 30. Just do it on that. 1080p, like you want one, pretty much like the MP4, but the difference, oh, oh the difference is the video format now how when you go on here you realize you won't have this unless you've installed the codex which will be in the link description below so click on that download that I'm not going to show downloading I'm pretty sure most of you are inept enough to download it yourself and when you've done that you should go on down you should yeah click on down it'll pop up click on it and hit configure now my computer is pretty good at doing it fast, so I hit ultra fast, and then it's like 20 minutes. I can do whip out a 20 minute video in 20 minutes. It's pretty good. Hit zero latency. You don't want any of that fading over. How many of you are sick and tired of having crossover fading? And it's like you're just like you're just like like I have contacts in at the minute. Just imagine they're just like split in half, and all you can see is double vision. That's what it's like. Just don't don't do that. Now this is the bit rate. Now I go on single pass through factor thing because it's easier to see the quality and the low quality and how good you want it to be. So if you want like an estimate, like do you know how the bitrate was like 10 to the maximum of 12? Well this one, you, it shows you one is the best and 51. So print it, I do 18, I found it's a nice little adjustment to 18. Uh, the codex, this is the codex. Now it doesn't matter, I do H because that's just whatever. I know it says X264 here, 
but X24 came out because it was a free version, a fan free made version of this one. But then they released this one for free anyway, so this one kind of just became redundant. So just go for H264, that's what you should use. Um, yeah, just leave that as that. Audio, 48,000, 16, and stereo. Project, best again, you want the best. Now I have to tell you the difference. Avi will make, with these settings, the colour may be a bit dimmer, as it looks a bit more faded. Like, I've, I've come to know this, like, when, when I was making um, my Walking Dead um, Telltale game, I realised that the colours were really faded, and, like, the black was, like, black, but it was, like, grey black. It looked, it still looked nice. It was high definition. It just looked a bit off. Whilst, as MP4 got all the colours right, and it looked really nice. It, it looked it pretty, pretty good. Um, so, yeah. It, yeah, Avi just makes it a brighter. I think it just makes your audio your video, sorry, brighter. So if you're willing to do that, do that. So, pros of MP4. Pros of MP4. Better quality, slower time, and Avi, faster time, slight, just a wee bit less quality. So it's up to you what you want to do. Try them out, whap them out, try your best, do what you want, and stuff like that. Now, I have to tell you, I am sick and tired. I don't know how many of you have gone across to Adobe and back to Vegas and to Adobe and Vegas and Adobe but I can't believe how many things it's like it's just the amount of problems video editing software has it's like you find editing software that's perfect and then you discover oh I'm just gonna unsync your audio because that's what Adobe does Oop, just bashed my mic but yeah you go on Adobe it renders fast it looks nice solves all the problems of Vegas none of that messy mashy bullshit that you have to deal with but just one, just a little, little, little smidge of a tip. It will desync everything. <laughs> Nothing would desync everything. It's a pain in the ass. Trust me. It's like, you just have to record at a constant frame rate. That's what professional old editing software does. I'm like, I have. I've done it at the 59.9, whatever. And I've done it at 60, a constant frame rate. I've done it on NVIDIA, 60 frames per second. I go on properties of the file, 60 frames per second. I'm like, great. 20 minutes after the video. Now, this is the catch. If you have a video recording longer than 20 minutes, ho oh, oh, ho oh, ho, Adobe, no, no. Do not, they do not like that. They will smack it down to the bosom of Abraham and it will look distinct as hell. Like, I, I just, I just be rendering, I rendered a video. It's about, it was up to two videos, so it was two 20 minute videos and the second half was the 20 minutes and it all desynced. I wasn't even aware of this. I, I, I edited it all fine and then I rendered it. And I just watched it back and I was like, hmm, something seems off here. I die, but I'm still driving a car. What's happening here? I don't understand what's happening. Turns out audio screws you over. <laughs> so if this video, do you know what this video is going to be called? Cutting the ball out of, out of, out of editing. Because uh, I don't know about you, but I'm sick and tired of all of these things. Every time you load it up, one thing is like, con, 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 pro to this editing software. Con, 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 con. That's that, that's, that's, that's my experience with this stuff. So for years, I finally somehow managed to do it. And there we go. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Like, comment, subscribe if you did. I know it's something different, but it needs to be done. Until next time. Bye.